2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, commands us to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Welcome to the battle. Jesus is Lord, not just of our hearts, but also of our minds. We need to be thinking God's thoughts after Him. This week's devotions are going to focus on the do's and don'ts, the cans and can'ts, the wills and won'ts in the Scriptures. We begin with this do and don't, what I don't know and what I do know. May the Lord bless it to your heart today. The first thing I do not know is I do not know the day of my death. Genesis 27, 2. The patriarch said, Behold now, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. But God does. He has our days numbered before we were conceived in the womb, according to Psalm 139. James chapter 4 verse 14 says, You do not know what will happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away like a morning mist. You do not know. I do not know what will happen tomorrow. But God does. He's already there and has it all planned. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us according to the will of God. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Well, we certainly know some things we should pray for, the glory of God, the salvation of others, but in many cases we don't know what we should pray for. But the Holy Spirit does, and he prays for us continually. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? None of us know the depths of the depravity of our own hearts, but God does, and that's why he sent Christ to save us, and gave us the Holy Spirit to change us. 1 Corinthians 4 Verse 4 says, I know nothing against myself, that is, my conscience is clear. I know nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. It's similar to what David says in Psalm 19, 12 and 13. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults. We do not know the depths of our own sin. We don't even see sin so often within our own hearts and minds, but God does, and that's why he's given us the Word and the Spirit. Matthew 24, 42, Jesus says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But the Father does, and he tells us to be ready. Deuteronomy 29, 29, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us, that we might obey all of God's revealed commands. The secret things. We don't know those things. They're not secret to God. They're secret to us. God knows everything. We don't. And so we must remain humble and focus on what we do know. We do know, as Job says in 1925, I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, how my heart yearns within me. Job knows what we know, that our Redeemer lives And we are going to see him face to face. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 14 says, I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. I know that God is sovereign and his purpose will be fulfilled. 
Jeremiah 29, 11. God says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. We know what God has revealed and that his plan for us ultimately is good. Romans 8, 28. The Apostle Paul declares, We know, you, me, him, all of us who are born-again believers, we know that all things are worked together for good for those who love God. Oh, there's many things we don't know, but we do know that God is working everything together according to his good plan. And what is that good plan? Well, the next two verses tell us it's to conform us to the fullness of the image of Christ. 2 Timothy 1.12, Paul says, I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him in view of that day, that glorious day when we see him face to face. Paul knew who he was trusting in. So do we. Jesus said in John 10.14, I know my sheep and they know me. Oh, that is the most blessed knowledge of all, to know our Savior and Lord. John chapter 9, verse 25, the blind man who was healed didn't know a lot, but he knew this. He said, one thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. Oh, beloved, we know the glory of the healing power of the blood of Jesus Christ that has brought us from death into life from darkness into glorious light. One thing I know, I was blind, and now I see. And lastly, 1 John 5.13, I've written these things to you who believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Is that not a glorious knowledge? To know for certain that our sins are forgiven, that Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's given us his perfect righteousness, and we stand saved, adopted, and accepted before Almighty God. Beloved, there's so much we don't know, but there's so much we do know. Let's anchor our faith on what God has revealed to us in his word and what we know to be his eternal truth. Thanks for joining us in our time in the Word today. 